Okay, lesson two on prayer. Uh, we want to talk about imagination and faith. Now, as you know, as believers, everything is about faith. Uh, to pray the prayer of faith. We know that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So your level of belief uh, in what you cannot see, what you cannot taste, what you cannot smell, what you cannot feel, what you cannot hear. Faith. That's what faith is. Uh, we walk by faith, not by what? Sight, sensory knowledge. So in essence, as we discussed before, you have to learn how to deny your senses. If you focus on your senses, there's no need for faith, right? Because you're basing your belief on what you can see, taste, smell, touch, and hear. And so faith is the opposite of that. Faith is denying what your senses try to convince you of. So just to be practical, uh, if your senses say I'm sick, faith says I'm healed by his stripes, right? But the fact is I don't feel good. Well, faith and facts are not consistent. So you have to learn how to deny your senses. now. How do you do that? Well, for me, because I'm a visual person, sometimes I got to close my eyes <laughs> and I can't use my physical eyes to get me through a situation because if I do, I may be gripped in fear, doubt, insecurity, anxiety, all types of things. Just think about the ch children of Israel. They were wandering throughout the wilderness for all those many years. It should have been supposedly like a 28 day journey but they kept spinning around in circles. Why? Because of their unbelief. Look at that. Their unbelief was counted as unrighteousness to God and they were wandering for all that time. And so I believe it was Moses who sent out spies uh, to Canaan and they came back with a report. And the majority of them said, we're like grasshoppers to these giants. We be not able. And then one said, we can do it. So he didn't look at the size of the giant because if he had, then common sense would have said, like everyone else, we be not able. But he was able to look beyond that. Either he believed enough in himself or the God that was in him, or he denied his senses because he held on to the word and promise of God. So you've got to be able to do the same. So you, for me, if the scripture says we walk by faith, not by sight, then I got to turn my sight off. In essence, I've got to turn off, switch off, get rid of my sensory knowledge and delve into the area of revelatory knowledge. Now let's go a little bit further. We talked about imagination. Imagination is an image that is created in your mind. Not an image that you see when you're using your senses, but an image in your mind. Think about the tower, the tower of Babel. When they were building this tower, God said, whatsoever they imagine, it shall not be denied for them. The only reason why the tower of Babel did not succeed is because God had to supernaturally intervene <laughs> to shut it down. Otherwise, according to the scripture, simply because they imagined it and simply because they were in agreement, it was going to come to pass. So that speaks of the power of imagination. Now, most people will read that scripture and we Christianize everything, every darn thing. And we say, well, imagination and fascination and visualization is of the devil because this particular scripture talks about an evil imagination. Well, see, that's how we get religious and falsely uh, in interpret the word of God. Let me tell you something. Someone once said that a grape can be used for medicinal purposes. A grape can be used for its nutritional value, but that same grape given a certain spin and given a certain twist can be used to do great harm. It's not what you use, but how you use what you use, not where you get it from, but what you do with it once you get it. Fire can be used to warm you. Fire can be used for purification, but beyond benefit, it can even lead to detriment, leading ultimately to the loss of life. Once again, not what you use, but how you use what you use 
and not where you get it from, but what you do with it once you get it. That is to say, just like money's neither good nor bad, but the application, the intent, and the motive of how you use it, imagination is neither good nor bad, but it is the motive, the intent, and the application of how you use it. So just as people can have an evil imagination, people can have a good imagination. So getting the image of what you want, in your mind, on your heart, in your spirit, and constantly seeing that without doubting, without wavering, without vacillating, that is the key to your prayer life. You've got to visualize, you've got to imagine on a daily and consistent basis. So prayer is more than a petition that you send up to God and say, God, will you do thus and so? It is using the faculties of your mind and it is bringing it into action, and it is visualizing and creating in your mind what it is that you want, okay? Now, the key is this. It's not what you want that you will attract, but it is what you believe to be true. I'll say that again. The key to your success in life is based upon not what you want to have in your life, but what you believe to be true. So if I believe that this thing is going to be a struggle and hard and it's going to take me out, guess what? You're right. If you believe that no matter what I may go through, that I'm going to come out a victor, I'm going to come out winning, then guess what? You're right. Whatever you choose to believe, you are right. If you believe you're ugly, you're right. If you believe you're good looking, you're right. (laughs) Whatever you choose to believe, you are right. Because whatever you believe, you operate and you act out based upon that level of belief. Likewise, if you really believe that you're healed, if you really believe that is possible for you, then your actions, your thoughts, and your mindset will be consistent with it. So... Here we go. We're going back to imagination. To imagine the thought, the vision in your mind, you got to get an image. So I want you to think about, I'm going to give you an example here. I want you to think about a steak, right? You've been to a lot of great restaurants, I'm sure. And you've had yourself a good steak. So I want you to close your eyes and think about this steak. Now, I'm going to ask you to do something that's weird. It may sound strange. It may not make sense, but think about it. I want you to use your imagination by a created image that you've come up with. But now I want you to infuse your sensory knowledge. Well, what what do you mean? I want you to add your thoughts to feelings. I want you to add your thoughts to what you can see, what you can taste, what you can smell, what you can feel, what you can hear. In essence, I want you to bring your senses into your imagination. So think about that steak. Now close your eyes. What kind of steak is it? Is it a T-bone? Is it a filet? I'm not really a meat eater like that. Is it a Delmonico? What kind of steak is it? I want you to see it in your mind. Now, I want you to pull that steak close to you. Literally pull it close to you. I want it to be close to you. I want you to smell it. What does it smell like? Get a feeling of what that steak smells like. What what what's the topping? What's the seasoning on it? I want you to grab that knife and fork and cut into that steak and I want you to put that piece of steak in your mouth and taste it. What does it taste like? Your mouth should be getting savory right about now. I want you to tell me what it looks like with your eyes, what it tastes like with your mouth, what it feels like. I want you to tell me what you hear. Do you hear the sizzle of the steak as it comes out? Is it bubbling? I want you to look at this image in in color, not in black and white, in full, rich, detail color. Create the image. See, that's what you got to do with your health. The image that you create through your imagination has got to be so real 
that it as it, it's as if you're living it out in your real life. Now, the more you begin to do that, you got an image of your health. You got an image of who you want to be. You got an image of, you know, seeing yourself vacationing, seeing yourself walking in the park, seeing yourself enjoying life. As long as you can get an image of it, your body is convinced that you are experiencing it. This is what I meant when I said experience the experience before you experience it. So as you go to that hospital, experience the experience before you experience it. Whatever it is, get the image in your mind, because guess what? According to the scripture, all things are possible to him that believeth. So if your faith is infused with your sensory knowledge, it becomes real in your life. So I don't want you to discount the the power of visualization and imagination. Now, this is something that you should be doing on a daily basis. If you just start off with five minutes a day and then build it up to six minutes and then seven minutes and then weeks later, before you know it, you're, you're so caught up in your imagination. It's like you're creating a movie and this movie is on the screen of your mind. And you get so consumed because guess what? You're the director, you're the producer, you're the writer, and you're the actor. You're everything all in one. And you, with your mind, uh, there's no limit on it. You can create whatever image you want. So why not get to creating? Because that is an aspect of prayer. So prayer is more than just a petition to God. Prayer is your ability to believe that you received before you even physically have it, but that can only be done using the faculties of your mind and your imagination is your everything. So get an image, hold it on your heart, get it in your spirit and wait for the manifestation to come.